he, he starts with a saity, and he writes on page 25, uh, by this is meant that God is in no sense correlative to or dependent upon anything beside his own being. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to uh, nickname Dr. Tipton Lane, no correlativity Tipton. And uh, I want to know in a snapshot look, Lane, why divine aseity is so critical uh, to Van Til. So no correlativity Tipton, take it away. Well, uh, I'm just following Cornelius No Correlativity Van Til. Uh, um, he, he, I think what we have to appreciate here is uh, when Van Til brings in that term, not correlative to, here's what he's affirming. He's affirming that God is self-contained, self-complete, and independent of all things. Here's the key not only in himself prior to and apart from creation, but in relation to creation. So it's, it's, it's critical to appreciate this. It's typical for theologians, maybe not steeped in Bavink or the Reformed tradition, to say that the aseity of God is simply talking about God in himself, wholly apart from his relation to creation. But what Van Til's wanting us to recognize, especially using that language of correlativity, is that the moment God relates to that which is not God in his sovereignly willed work of creation, God is, and this is italicized, God is and remains absolute, self-sufficient and self-contained independent of the creature, and that means he is not acted upon or determined by the creature at any point in his relation to the creature. And so this is, a, this is something that really is critical to understand. Apart from relation to creation and in that relation, God is self-contained, self-complete, absolute, and the idea of, of mutually dependent relation to creation where God and the creation are equally submerged in a process of historical development. That's what Van Til right up front wants to deny. And in its place, he confesses this thoroughgoing doctrine of God's independence. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's very helpful. Um, one of the things I love that he's going to bring out a little bit later is that this notion of divine absoluteness is a definite biblical conception of absoluteness. And if you go back to Bavink in that second volume, I know we're talking about Van Til here, but Bavink is at pains to say that this notion of absoluteness is not the abstract uh, absoluteness of of philosophical thought that would seek to um, abstract certain features from creation in order to arrive at a master concept, which, which on that approach would end up being an empty absolute. Uh, this absolute, when we speak of the being of God, is an infinitely full and rich and wonderful uh, living absoluteness of being. And this is the presupposition for all of God's activity in space and time as he reveals himself as the absolute immutable God at every point. And so the, the listener needs to get accustomed to having a definite conception of divine absoluteness, a definite conception of tripersonality, a definite conception of the creator-creature distinction and relation as we move ahead. But I'm going to hold off on a particular point that I want to make until we get there. Well, you uh, know, just quickly, uh, before we move on too far, this is a, a sidebar thought, but it's building on what both of you brothers said. One reason Van Til might move through this so quickly in his dependence on Bavink is that a number of these men who criticized him were themselves Dutch theologians. And so they would be very familiar with Bavink. And yeah, I think good. Van Til moving so quickly, following seriatim the topics that Bavink treats in his RD2, is saying to them in almost encoded language, brothers, I am following Bavink. 
I'm being orthodox as far as I understand it, as it's represented by Bavink. And the starting point here is if you're going to follow Bavink, you cannot affirm correlativity at any point. 